Hi, I'm Rob Powers, and I was the creator and supervisor of the virtual art department on the film Avatar, and also a virtual art director on the film Tintin. Virtual movie making, or virtual filmmaking, is basically a process where virtual technologies, such as a virtual camera, virtual environments, they're all in CG, and uh, performance capture, which is basically an evolution of motion capture, where an actor's performance is mapped onto a digital character in real time, including facial and hand motions oftentimes, to create the semblance of everything that directors had in a, a live action film, in essence. So the advantages of this are that all of the uh, immersion in a, a film on a set that an actor and directors and a cinematographer and the production designer and art directors would have had on a live action film where they could go into an environment or a set and see all of the lighting and the texture and the atmospherics and interact with that set. And in essence, oftentimes change the blocking or change the camera setup or change the action that the actors would actually take because of what was offered from actually seeing the set and all of the props in front of them. Uh, basically, a real-time immersion in that environment allows the director and all of the creative team on a film to have a creative discovery process that they go through. So when there is an absence of that, which is what the process used to be when it was just an empty motion capture stage, potentially, um, it was very alienating to that creative process. So virtual movie making actually opens up a whole era uh, which actually brings us back to the collaborative discovery process, which was always the mainstay and the way that live action films were made. So the advantages of that, of virtual movie making, are that a director and all of the team, including the actors and the uh, production designer, art director, cinematographer, everyone essentially, uh, can collaborate in a virtual environment interacting with the sets, the props, any kind of creatures or effects, and really go through that same discovery process together as a creative unit. So you can replicate all of the things that you would have had on a live action set, such as uh, a camera rig or platform or crane shots, all of those kinds of things. But the virtual aspect allows you to take it even further and augment all of the things that a, that a real camera could do or real sets could do with the computer uh, virtual element. So for example, if you had a real practical set, unless you built it that way, every wall in the room would be a hard wall that would be in the way of the camera. For you to be able to move the camera through or block certain shots or place the camera in certain places, you would have had to have thought of that in a real live action set and built the walls to fly out, for example that oftentimes is hard to foresee in production. But with a virtual set, when you design everything to be immersive and interactive and changeable uh, in the moment on the set, as we did on Avatar, for example, for Jim Cameron, you can fly anything out, shrink things, move things around, rescale things, replace things uh, near instantly, and it allows that creative process, which was always part of live action filmmaking, to actually be uh, uh, amped up to, 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 to a, a new generation of technology, which basically is, uh, I, I mean, I like to think of uh, where we were with visual effects heavy films and animated heavy films, motion capture films, if you will, uh, as a dark ages for about 20 years, because directors and actors and everyone be, would be working for the sequences which are heavily CG enhanced in an alien environment, and then it would be sent to a post-production process. And maybe months later, those shots and those elements would be coming back to the director and the team to see, uh, give feedback on, which, you know, they're not even in the moment anymore. They're not in that creative moment where that inspiration and that discovery process was happening. So they're being a completely different creative space. And it really is, is nothing like the collaborative discovery process that would have happened on a live action film in the moment when that is oftentimes when the magic of filmmaking happens. So the great thing about virtual filmmaking, virtual movie making, is that it brings that back 
to visual effects heavy and animated films so that actors and directors and production designers and art directors, virtual art directors can collaborate in this immersive virtual environment and get back to their roots, if you will, back to what they uh, uh, are best at, back to an environment and, and a collaborative process that feeds that discovery process in the moment of filmmaking. It's what it's many ways what filmmaking is really about. So that's the exciting thing about virtual movie making. It's something I'm most proud about, about the flexibility that we offered to directors like Jim Cameron in the moment through the setup process where we cataloged and uh, uh, applied metadata to thousands of plants and assets so that he could have as immersive and as flexible and changeable of a process uh, as possible when he's moving through these environments and the actors as well uh, and everyone on the team essentially could go through that process. As you may know, I'm the head of 3D development at NewTek. So I'm in charge of developing the software Lightwave 3D. It's a very exciting process and I'm so excited to work with our development team, which I think is the best development team in the world. They're the most creative people I've worked with. They are just so impressive with what they can do. And we're having such fun developing this software. But what new tech and Lightwave 3D offers to virtual movie making since I've joined the company is that we have implemented a virtual studio system which began with Lightwave 10, was enhanced further with Lightwave 10.1, and is going to even go uh, much further with our next iteration of the product, where we are uh, opening up the SDK for virtual devices which plug into uh, the system and which use the human interface design standard, which essentially means that all of the technology that, we, that you would have had to have uh, purchased some complex system to virtually move through and control your virtual cameras or your light or a prop or puppet a character, all of that technology can now be done essentially with off-the-shelf game controllers uh, such as uh, you know, the, um, you know, any, any device from a, a game console system that adheres to the human uh, interface de uh, device standard, which are most uh, joysticks and other devices, uh, such as uh, you know the controllers uh, for um, the Move controller uh, and, and other things, the, the Microsoft Connect, all of those types of things, uh, all of them adhere to this standard. So with our SDK being open up, it just it it makes that technology for immersive walkthroughs and virtual location scouts. And uh, all kinds of all types of amazing things that we're going to be implementing into our software. Um, and we've got we've laid the groundwork for recording takes of these cameras so that when you handhold the devices, it's actually capturing in real time in certain takes your motion as the director uh, working the camera, just as we did uh, on Avatar and on, on Tintin, for example. So we're, so, so we're very excited at NewTek about all of this technology and bringing it to a wider audience and making it relevant to all of our users. The technologies that allow uh, virtual movie making, virtual filmmaking, are really, you know, one of the exciting things about this, being from one of the first generations uh, that was really heavily influenced by both blockbuster films and also uh, video games on many levels. You know, like I, I was uh, heavily influenced by Pac-Man and all of that stuff early on. But, but, but one thing that I saw is that both of those industries, although there were so many similarities and our generation really saw that, they were so uh, separate from each other. So the exciting thing about virtual movie making, and really Avatar was the film and, and, and Jim Cameron's inspiration and motivation to all of us to create the technologies that would support his vision. Uh, you know, with Glenn Derry and myself and others that were so heavily involved in this process. Basically, you see... a finally, uh, a merger of the video game technology with uh, filmmaking. And it are, it, it's things like the real-time display uh, that, that, that was really pioneered by game engines, for example. Real-time dynamics engines, like the great stuff that is from, uh, you know, uh, given to us by companies like NVIDIA um, and with their physics engine. All of that type of technology feeds the real-time feedback that you need, the real-time lighting, the real-time shadows, atmospherics, all of the things that allow you to feel like that virtual environment that you're working with is actually a real environment that you're standing in. 
that you're completely immersed in because it needs to be of a higher level quality. You know, not really pre or shaded quality anymore. It, it's really about making the movie. I, I remember one thing that was uh, very telling was Jim Cameron liked to say, this is not pre -vis. This is viz. This is making the movie. And so that means that all of the production design and art direction that, that was done by Rick Carter and Rob Stromberg and others on the film, all the great uh, art directors that worked on Avatar, for example, that was all part of the process when we went into the virtual environments. And I was the virtual environment supervisor on Avatar as well. And all of that was carried over and was present on the set uh, for Jim Cameron when he was making the film, which is the exciting thing about this technology. You have to have the technologies of the real-time display, the technology of the interface, the human interfaces, which is a virtual camera interface in some way, the technology of performance capture, which is no longer really, uh, you know, we're not talking about motion capture. We're talking about performance capture, which is really capturing an actor's performance at every, you know, every nuance of that, which includes the facial performance. It includes hand and finger performance and all of the body performance to such a degree that their true performance that they give in the moment can be remapped onto a digital character. And you can tell that that actor was the soul of that character's performance. It's so exciting. I can tell you being on the stage when Zoe uh, gave her performance uh, as Natiri in, in the scenes where you were so moved in Avatar, her performance on the set was exactly what the audience experienced in the final film production. When you saw, when you sat in the theater and you saw that performance on Natiri, the digital uh, character, it, it, it was Zoe a thousand percent coming through that screen. And that was the most exciting thing for me is that it was really the actor communing, communicating through the technology, almost as if the technology was a sense, uh, you know, a virtual uh, uh, makeup or virtual mask uh, uh, that she was wearing. But it was truly her spirit and her soul that was driving that in the same way that the spirit and the, the, the soul of Jim Cameron was driving that virtual camera on every shot in that film. And this is the exciting thing that virtual filmmaking brings to the process. It's something that is so exciting to experience. Uh, it, was a, it was an honor to work with everyone involved, including Jim Cameron and, 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 and all of the great people that worked uh, on, on the production. And I think that the greatest thing about this moving forward is that virtual technology has just started to be uh, 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 seen in, in the way that it can potentially influence the industry. Uh, of course, it was at the high level when someone like Jim Cameron would invest in the technology and others would come on at the high level. But this technology is scalable. And what we're excited about at New Tech is offering uh, the technology in a package that Lightwave 3D, which is, is accessible uh, by everyone, so that uh, for, for all levels of budget and schedule, you can work in uh, virtual production into the process. And as an art director myself, a uh, member of the ADG, the Art Directors Guild, I can tell you that uh, design is also fed by working in the virtual environment in art departments from, from, the, from the inception. So that the design of an actual location or, or a set would be changed because you were using virtual technology in the art departments, in films and television from the inception. It really does change the movie for the better in, in so many ways. And I look forward to, you know, maybe in, in future going into more detail about that because it is really a profound influence that it has on the industry. So, you know, I'm so uh, happy to be talking to you about this. I'm so, um, I'm so glad to share this with you. And uh, I wish you all the best. And uh, thanks for listening.